Well, Dan, here we are. We are here, indeed. Are we unstoppable? Um, I don't think anybody wants to stop anybody, right? Or yeah, not well, us, just, at least. I don't know why anybody would want to stop us. We're not just, doing anything. I just don't think anybody can stop us. <clears throat> well, that's kind of what we're going to talk about today, Yeah, I guess, in a way. Because there's all these weird rules coming around about uh, what you can and can't do with your family and where, when, and why, and how, and uh, over the holidays and things like that. And we've seen already uh, the two biggest, uh, I guess, guilty parties, for lack of a better phrase in this, are Cuomo and uh, Newsom, right? Yeah, for New sure. York, New York and New California, York and California respectively, for sure. which is nothing new, but Newsom has put out all these crazy rules. Like you have to, you can't pass food to one another three households or less represented less than two hours. It has to be outside, blah, blah, blah. It's all a bunch of dumb shit. And um, I, gotta, I gotta be honest. Like, I don't think that I'm, I'm not going to say that the, obviously it's, it's ridiculous rules he's making. Right. Right. But you're ridiculous if you follow them. Yeah, of course. And I mean like the orange County sheriff is like, yeah, we're not enforcing any of that. You guys can get fucked. Um, the problem is, with and it, and it goes back to what we talk about a lot here on American Party and also on Drinker Bros that um there, there's no authority to appeal to that anybody trusts. There are no institutions anymore. So when when a guy like Newsom says don't do this, and then you see picture video of him at the French Laundry, which is a Michelin star restaurant in Napa uh, with a ton of people, like twenty some people. One of which is a lobbyist for one of the big medical companies. One is the director of one of the big medical companies there in California. Um, if somebody's giving you medical advice and saying, hey, you're going to die if you don't take this advice, but they are not taking it, then you know they're full of shit, right? That's a pretty good way to know it. Same thing with Cuomo this past week. They put out all these crazy draconian rules. Uh, my, I don't know who the organization is, but, but what I was told was Border Patrol is setting up checkpoints in New York to see where people are going and track things and blah, blah, blah. I mean, look, the freedom of movement is very important. Yes. Uh, and then he announced like, oh, I'm trying to get my, get my mom to come over here for the holidays, which is a completely reasonable thing to do. As a matter of fact, as much as I dislike Cuomo, I want him and his brother, who I also don't like, to be able to share the holidays with their mother. Because this might be the last goddamn chance they get. Well, I wouldn't wish that on anybody to lose because I was never close with my family, but... Uh, we're close. Yeah, well, you and I are close right now in proximity for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I would never wish, I would, I would never want to disabuse somebody their their right to, to do what they want in general, much less to see their elderly parents during the holidays or even their family in general. But, you know, you can't, you can't put out edicts like that and then break the rules yourself and expect people to take you seriously. Like the whole point of the overreach is based, in my opinion, based on this premise that people are dumb they don't know how to take care of themselves. This, it's the liberal nanny state bullshit, right? It's been going on for years. People can't think for themselves or take care of themselves. So we're going to do it for you. Just do what we say. You'll be fine. Sorry, but I'm not doing that. Because yeah, we I, did what you said for a long time and it didn't work. I mean, look, I, I go back to the same thing is, is like, um, when, so, so first off, like I, you can't think that surely you want to take out of the, 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 um, equation that you thought that you, when they elect, when the people who voted for this man, they thought that this is what they were going to do. Right. So yeah. I think, I think what's really going to tell us the temperature of the American people is when the election comes back up for the, mm. these two people. And if they both get reelected, then if you live in either one of those States, uh, you should get out of there because yeah. you are surrounded by fucking idiots. Yeah, there's um and sheep. You're surrounded by sheep. And I mean, at what point does it stop? Like when they're looking at you telling you that we're gonna put rules in of how to pass your food yeah. in your home. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. I what's mean what's next? At that point, it's just like what's next? You've gotten too ridiculous. I mean, we've all been in these situations, particularly people that have been in the military. We call it the good idea fairy, right? Usually it's a group of, uh, it's the same guy that in class reminded the teacher to assign homework. Yeah. Fucked everybody. Yep. Instead of that in the, in the military and in the corporate world, and then obviously in government as well, uh, there's, there's always one or two assholes that are like, oh, you know, we should think about this and decide what we want to do. Why don't you just give people power 
as you know we intended in this country and then we'll figure it out i mean look when when joe biden even says he's against a nationwide shutdown right uh um, yeah i mean you know it, it's 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 kind of it's kind of incredible isn't it it is yeah and it, it, it it's uh, I guess it brings us to our first topic today, and that is uh, the Constitution. What does it mean exactly? You know, there's we're not going to go line by line through the whole thing. Every, if you're watching this show, hopefully you're familiar with it. But I want to talk about more than just the uh, more than just the document itself and the words behind it, the the meaning of these things, and and what the intent was. Now, the intent of the 10th amendment is to make sure that anything not spelled out in the, in the constitution and the charter of this country is given back to the States because while we wanted a strong central federal government to handle certain things like national defense and such, uh, we were very wary of strong central government because all we knew about it wasn't Republic. It was, it was a, like a, 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 I wouldn't call England a dictatorship, but I mean, frankly, they were acting like it at the time. You know what I mean? Certainly it's not that now, but we don't like kings here. We don't like uh, people who would presume to tell us what to do without some very good reason for it. Uh, there's a, there's a, I don't know, maybe I would say that it, it's not just the United States that feels that way. There's a lot of places that feel that way, but um, it is, so it's not necessarily unique here, but there are places where I've seen like Iraq, those people want to be told what to do because that's what they've been used to for so long, right? There, there doesn't seem to be any kind of but, impetus but, but, to but, do your but, own thing in, in, in mass. But here in America, people want to do what they want to do. They want to be left alone. Like, I'll be honest. Like, I, I, um, when I left Iraq, I felt like Iraq, the Iraqi people were exactly what America would look like if Democrats controlled everything. <laughs> Right. I mean, if you, if you get. Now look, Republicans are so fucked up too. So yeah, like, no, I, I keep sure. saying Republic or Democrats, Republicans, look, they're both fucked up, but, but you do have to admit that Democrats are more passive. They are more uh, systematic. Well, they want more government control yes. and what that does. There's, it, there's a number of consequences from that. Like they, I get, I don't think that. Uh, Democrats are like evil for no, wanting no, that. No, no, no. It's no. a theory, uh, theory. But what we know from history is that it just doesn't work, right? Yeah. Uh, the more you keep people on the tit, keep people dependent on you for information, money, uh, whatever it is, healthcare, doesn't matter what it is. Um, they lose the ability to provide and think for themselves. And we see that now. People can't think for themselves anymore. Um, <clears throat> you have, uh, f find me people who are moderates. Those are people that I respect because yeah. particularly in today's uh climate because you're being told what to think all the time and when you say no or question it then you get questioned yourself so if i if somebody tells me that i need to shut my business down or whatever or somebody tells me that i shouldn't be protecting my building with with a gun because a person's life is more important than my building that building represents my work and my money right my everything about my life Your home. is in that building yeah. not just my home i'm talking about businesses whatever it is like yeah technically speaking if you take it down to the very lowest level the building is more important or i'm sorry the, the person but, is more important <clears throat> than the building sure but what the building represents which is me my ability to be free and earn my own living in this country is more important than any life the principle behind that is more important than even my life but don't you think don't you think this is a vicious cycle that's been started right so the cycle is is that when the government, when you've been on the government, to, have you really earned what you've got? Right. Well, that's and what so, that's what Obama meant when he said you didn't build that. Remember that yeah, statement? He yeah. was talking about how like the interstate highway system and, and whatever else. Um, and I've heard that come from a lot of liberals too, like uh, uh, how the government spends money or whatever, giving money back. And, and, the, and conservatives will say they're just giving us our own money back, which is absolutely true, by the way. And I've heard liberals say... You wouldn't say that you wouldn't if if, but, if but, Walmart but, gave you a refund, you wouldn't say they're giving you your are or, or, or they're they're paying you. They're just giving you your money or whatever. I'm like, no, dude, this is not a company. This is a government. And we said, hey, how much money do you need to do these baseline things? And they're like, well, you know, kind of need a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more year after year. And it wasn't just a look. 
the uh, Democrats, rather, the Department of Homeland Security only exists because of George W. Bush and Dick Cheney. 150 to 180,000 new employees, essentially within, what, three-year period? The average government salary has got to be, what, like $160,000 a year? No. There's not right. a I'm not one i am $60,000 a year. Yeah, 60. So even at that lower level, and this is without, this is without um, cost of living adjustments that you get in places like California and stuff like that. Hey, holy shit. Yeah. The average, the average government salary is $81,402. You said 81000 shit. Four hundred and two. Oh, yes, that and is, twenty-two cents. So, just on the Department of Homeland Security, not for any of the stuff they do, but just the personnel, not including pensions, not including health care, any of that other stuff. That's fifteen billion dollars a year. Golly, eighty-one thousand average government salary. Billion dollars. The a most year. inefficient business in the world. Yeah, and people are paid eighty-one thousand. Four hundred dollars. Yeah, it's crazy. So, I mean, where where in the Constitution did it allow for the federal government to to even gain power, much less gain more and exploit that power? The Constitution is, is one of those issues, I guess. It's it's one of the most selectively applied documents in all of American jurisprudence. Yeah. People decide. It's like the, it's almost like the Bible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like people just. They have their belief and they search for reasons to make the document fit their beliefs. That's all it is. Um, a lot of folks believe that it's a living document that needs to be applied. Uh, the, the lessons need to be applied in the time we are now, but not necessarily the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. Uh, some people say it's timeless and concrete and the original interpretation should be held today. And, and the, the, the constitutional uh, originalists, Think that that is the only application of the concept. If you like, I, the people that during the gun debates say uh, "shall not infringe," they just repeat that phrase over yeah. and over again. Like, yeah, that's true. But if there's any example where you would limit anybody's gun rights, then it's not "shall not infringe." It's "shall not infringe," except for right, except for if you're a crazed felon, if you're beating your wife, if you're a drug addict, or whatever. The cases, right? So any of that. So there, there's the problem, there's caveats to all those things, and there's caveats. You can't yell fire in a crowded movie theater with that with impunity. There's but, all but, kinds but, of but things. But when you go back to that, like so, like I, I don't think that the people who say, you know, well, you're you're taking. So I, I think that you hear these people fight against you, you taking anything, or mm. you 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 making any more laws for gun laws, right? Uh, because mm. they don't trust the system of who upholds these laws. Exactly. Yeah, and if, they shouldn't. By the way, they shouldn't. But, but, but it's the same way that like when the government tries to regulate health care or, yes. or, or regulate like uh, uh, particularly women's health care, people on the left are naturally and reasonably distrustful of the government getting involved in that. But, in the same way that people on the right are distrustful of the government getting involved. But my thing back in is, is that like they don't want more government. But why do they keep voting in people who want more government? That's a good question. You'll have to ask anybody that's voted Republican since... Uh, <sighs> Let's see. Reagan, I guess. Reagan raised taxes five out of the eight years he was in office. Um, uh, George H.W. Bush raised taxes. Um, uh, George W. Bush presided over the largest expansion of the federal government in history. And under tr even Trump, the national debt fucking ballooned yep. big time, more than it has under anybody else. Now, that's, uh, there's, a, there's reasons for that, but it doesn't really matter to me. I don't care about the reasons. I care about the outcome. Stop giving me excuses and start giving me results i want to I ask you i want to ask you so i don't want to get off this topic too far but i, I want to ask you do you feel like i mean the what's what's the, out, out so do you feel like the two what's the two biggest things you think trump ran on said he was going to do build a wall <clears throat> and what and drain There's the what? swamp yep. <clears throat> did, did neither of those things how, sure. how how effective do you think he was let me ask you let's, let's see how much wall was built while trump was in well that i mean look there there's quite a bit but uh that I have a problem with any any leader that shows up to a four to eight year job and and tries to pass a thirty year plan. It doesn't make it doesn't work that way in this country. We don't do things like that here. We don't have kings or dictators. We don't have uh, we we do have term limits and things like that. Um, it's it's just unreasonable to think that's going to be the case. You know what I mean? So, and with regard to did he do it? 
skipping the wall part, the drain the swamp part. And in a lot of ways, I think he has exposed how ridiculous and distrust well, or I, untrustworthy listen, uh, politicians are. I'll say this on the wall. He, he built all but nine miles of it. Is that accurate? Yep. Um, by uh, September, so October 29, 2020, uh, so he's got 400 miles. Uh, he had a goal of 450 miles by the end of the year. So far, all but nine miles of construction has has replaced older broken barriers. Mm. So he got the wall built. Part of it. Yeah. I mean, I think that a lot of what they did was construction on parts of the wall that already existed, I think. Yeah. Just to reinforce it and make it higher, blah, 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 whatever. Um, I personally think the wall is down, but he did say he was going to do it. Yeah. So, it, it, I mean, he, he they, they made an effort and it's been people have attempted to block it at every turn. Oh, Even is. Obama came out this week and made one of the more asinine statements I've ever heard in my life, yeah. which is uh, how Hispanics in America... He can't understand why they voted. He, he, he said they voted for Trump for like religious reasons because of how they feel about abortion and shit like that and religion instead of their own best interests. Well, I got a couple of uh, points that- for, for everybody that is uh, an Obama supporter and is glad to see Biden in office right now. Obama built the goddamn cages that those kids are in, right? Built them, deported more people in his, under his presidency than all previous presidents combined. So... Maybe shut the fuck up on that one, dude. Seriously, that's that's not a good look. Uh, to, to be honest, I can't understand why people like Obama so much. He was so ineffectual. I, when I say why people can't, why well, tell you why they liked him? Because he wasn't Cause George he, Bush. Because he's a likable guy, as far as his personality. Yeah, but so is Bush. Well, of course, Bush so, is a nice so, guy. Bush is a nice guy too. But that's why I'm telling you is is is, is same thing with Clinton. I mean, everybody like. I mean, but that's, he's a very enigmatic. I mean, all of them, all three of them, when they walk into the room, like you don't even think about their politics, their personalities are such, they gravitate and their, you know, their personalities are such, you know, they're they're, like, I'll I'll tell you on a personal side of it, like really awesome people to be around. Yeah. Right. Your politics definitely don't agree with those. Well, uh, who do you want doing stuff for you? Like if I, if yeah. I if I need hard work done, I'm not going to I'm not having a nice guy contest. Of I'm not course. I'm not having a contest to see who's prettier, who speaks better. Exactly. I'm having a contest to who can get shit done. So oh. this this week, uh Saudi Arabia won't admit it because they're embarrassed by it, but they're having peace talks with Israel right now. Saudi Arabia, this is gonna be a fourth major Middle Eastern country. And I told you, I, I pointed this out on Drink It Bros uh when the first one or the second one went down, what was that, four months ago? Uh, he's basically going down the list of all the richest Muslim countries in the Middle East and, and getting them involved in business deals and trade agreements with Israel. Who is? Why? Donald Trump is. Why? Why did he do that? Obviously, because the only color that matters on this country is green. green. Poverty turns into, uh, into uh, criminal behavior and, and all terrorism is is another form of criminal behavior. Like we, we think terrorism is the boogeyman. Somehow it's this this hard to define thing and so you know when you when you say it you're invoking xyz no it's just a type of crime it's like murder terrorism man it's it's not it's not some crazy special thing it's just another form of crime essentially right and it's international crime so when what rich country are we battling right now the soviet union was poor and they tried to China. use they tried to use their military strength to control a bigger portion of poverty than they were able to do and it turned out poorly for them right china was the same way until they made that switch from a communist dictatorship to a capitalist oligarchy right with with communist principles they sure they govern in the way that communists govern which is to say uh the people that are rich use capitalism and the people that are poor get communism, right? That's how it works. But the more money they've started to make pushing into that, you even see American manufacturers moving to other countries other than China now because Chinese people are expecting to be paid now. You know what I mean? Like things are changing there. I'm not saying China's a good place to be. They're certainly not a friend of ours, but rich countries like that, we're fighting with 
policy at that point and not guns and bombs. It's a really important distinction. Well, yeah, I mean, you, look, you, you take a country that's, you take a country that, like, like China, they're never going to fight us directly. No, why would they? Why would they, right? Russia is never going to fight us directly. Like, they don't want their own shit tore up either. Yeah. Right? Like, they don't want, they know what, they know what it's like. Like, you're never going to see a major country like that. So they're going to do it these other ways, these all course, ulterior yeah. ways, right? Well, I mean, that, so, yeah, and, and back to the, the Constitution, this, this document is, was meant to, it was meant to be uh, a, a lighthouse in a, in, a, in, a, in a world that is, at the time, but increasingly so now, is dark and cloudy, and it's hard to tell what's going on, and it's hard to figure out what is and what is not right sometimes. And having that bellwether that is all people are created equally, and individual liberty is the most important thing, right? Those two principles alone are the most important things that a human being could ever believe and support, in my opinion. Of course. So that's the foundation. I, the second idea that we spoke about a minute ago, which is <clears throat> we're only a direct, literal, in time, originalist view of the Constitution is the only way. <laughs> Seems weird to me but because the first 10 amendments were the Bill of Rights were ratified three years after the Constitution was written. So they knew within the first three years they didn't get everything right, and they fixed it. And the last amendment was, what, 91 or something? It was the congressional pay thing. So we've been adding to this for a long time. I mean, Washington, George Washington was still our president at the time, and the founding fathers, including uh, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Hamilton, Madison, uh, <laughs> Even though, even though Jefferson referred to the authors as demigods, he was a big fan of what they were doing there because he obviously had this huge rift between him and Adams and even more so between him and uh, Hamilton because Hamilton want, wanted very strong central government and Jefferson didn't. But even, even then, they knew that there was work to be done, right? So if... Within the first three years of implementing the Constitution, they were like, hey, you know what? We actually missed some things. Why, what makes us think that they got it all then? Did we know everything we were ever going to know about ethics and society in 1797? The chances are very unlikely that that is the case, right? I can't imagine that being the case. So, so how, do we, how do we approach the Constitution? Do we treat it as holy writ or is it a collection of good ideas meant to be the foundation of how to think and not what to think, right? It, it, I believe it to be the latter. I think the Ninth and Second, uh, Tenth Amendment are pretty clear about that. Anytime a document that is the foundational document of a, of a country, of a government, of a way of thinking, the last two entries are like, hey, by the way, if we didn't cover something here, it goes back to the lower level. That means the framers fully intended the states to have more power than the, go the federal government. Absolutely, one hundred percent. So it what the fuck sense. are we doing here? Well, I mean, look, it's 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 the the states have have just bought in to the government, right? Like the federal government wanted more power, yeah. And so what they did is they started offering out this money. It's like drug dealers, right? Like it's like, hey, I'm going to offer out some money. I'm going to make life a little bit fu fucking easier for you. And so you know, all these programs like No Child Left Behind, like all these other bailouts that they that the federal government's been doing for, like, let me ask you this: Why does the federal government get more of our taxpaying dollars than the own, our own state that we live in? I have no idea. I don't know why. Uh, does that make sense? Like, what, what, in what world does the federal government? I mean, think about this from your own business. Let's say you're a liberal out there right now and you work for a tech company, right? And all of a sudden the tech company comes down with some new crazy policy. Yes. And it's because something happened in one office somewhere in the country, but now the entire country gets affected by this. Everybody, every rational human being looks at that situation and says, well, that's fucking stupid and it's lazy. They didn't wanna, they didn't wanna give power to the individual at the lowest possible level, which is a good thing to do, by the way, because it trains people to use that power responsibly. And the more people that have power, the more responsibly everybody uses it. If you give one guy power, right? If you give one person in a room a gun, you just eventually some bad shit can happen, right? You give everybody a gun. Not that that's a great example, but let's, let's say $10,000. You give everybody 10 grand, 
in the room instead of just one person, then everybody gets to decide. And that breeds the kind of society that we want, one where people are talking together and figuring out the best solution at the lowest possible level for the most amount of people. That's the whole point of all this. So um, I don't get it, man. I don't understand why the state's ever allowed that. And I don't know, I don't know why any reasonable person would think that the federal government can do it better, can do, can legislate for 330 million people better than one state like Texas can for 12 or well, however but, many well, it, 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 I don't, so I don't think it's anything, I don't think anybody believes that. I think it's more of a, um, it's de deferring accountability. It is. It's yeah. deferring people responsibility, lazy. right? Yeah. It's like, Hey, look, I can blame the federal government for holding us down. I can blame, you know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's passing on blame and responsibility. I mean, and this, by the way, is the reason that I personally dislike Trump. It's not because of his policies necessarily. Some of the things he did uh, for for uh, gay and lesbian protections was kind of weird to me. Like, why? I don't get it. Some of the, some of the stuff just seemed weird and punitive. I don't know if he even cares about that. To be honest, it could have just been people on his staff. But other than that, the policy stuff he does is fine. I'm fine with most of it, to be honest. Uh, but he is a person. When you have the right answer to something, and I think that that individual responsibility and, and fiscal conservative conservatism to some degree is probably the right answer. Historically, it looks like it is right. Uh, if you fuck that up because you can't keep your mouth shut, you've done a disservice to your country. That is not patriotism to be a dick so badly that people hate you and they won't listen to what you're saying when you're in power. That's not patriotism to me. I'm not saying he's unpatriotic. I'm saying he had a duty to reach out to people and he didn't do it. He made an effort to not do it as a matter of fact. And that's the problem that I have with the guy. It has something to do with his policies. Now I still voted for him and I would again. I, I, there's no way Joe Biden is going to be a good president. No. There's no way. At, at best, this is at best. Yeah. Which is still terrible. Yeah. At best, it's a third, it's a, it's a, it's a third term for Obama at best. Yeah. Or a first term for uh, Kamala Harris, but either way, neither one of those are good. Um, uh, so, you know, it is what it is. I feel like. So how do you think we get back? How do we get, what, what, how do we get back to where the states have the power? Well, the states need to start flexing on the federal government. That's what needs to happen. The problem is, is that they've been drawn so far into, into social welf welfare at this point that a lot of them don't have the financial capability to do that. Um, well, yeah, because they bought into all these programs. Yeah. So now what do you do? I mean, if you've expanded your own internal budget such that you can't afford the day-to-day -day stuff that you need to be able to afford with the tax dollars you're collecting, then you, you fucked yourself as a, as a state. Um, <clears throat> it, it almost seems like we kind of need a hard reset and it, that would take years of planning. And when I say it would take years of planning, here's what I mean. We can't allow anybody to slip through the cracks when we do it. Like it definitely needs to be done. We need a complete reorganization of how we think about government and how government acts with regard to collecting tax dollars, disseminating them, creating uh, social programs, uh, 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 creating laws, all that stuff needs to be reworked. We're fucked right now. But how do you do it without people who are truly in need getting fucked over? I don't want but, one person to suffer because that's gonna, and maybe that's a pipe dream. Maybe we can't do it that way. But here's the other thing is, I go, I go back to, I, I think, how does a president make real change Look, I, I think I think we have to, and I, I, I'm all for term limits, mm. but I think the president's position has got to be a longer position. Yeah, I don't know why eight right? years. Like, like, why eight? Why? Right? How like, do we decide that? I'm not saying there shouldn't be term limits, yes. but why eight? Why do we decide that? Is eight enough time to get the shit done you need to get done? Yeah, like, Was two just a nice round number? Like, what if we backed off? Okay, like, what if we said, hey, our president's automatically going to get eight years? Right. Right. Uh, but you got term limits. Like what if we backed off like on even in the Senate and the House and said instead of you having to, you know, uh, go every two and six years. Right. Right. Uh, well, six, I think is fine for Senate. I think but six two is for fine. the House is stupid because hey, they spend most of their money fundraising, which is oh, when you when you create a scenario where somebody has to constantly be raising money to just to stay in government, yep. then what are they going to do? They're going to be selling out to special interests exactly. immediately. So like, immediately. Or like, the RNC or the DNC, so, whomever so, it is. So maybe we go everybody's eight years. So it gives us an opportunity just to flip reset everything, every time, a reset yeah. every fucking time, right? It's like a, a reset every single time. And everybody's at the same eight years. Maybe, so yeah. we can say, hey, you know what? Like, because, because look, I mean, look how inefficient our government is. Like most of the time, like you take Obama and with... Um, I think it happens almost every time, but like on the second term of a Republican or Democrat, mm. they lose power because usually 
the House or Senate. It either flips, happens in that right? first midterm or it, the second it does. election. Yeah. And so then, the you, so you've got everybody against <clears throat> each other. Like nobody, like nobody's working against, you know, together. And all these people are out there trying, especially now with the media, they're all out there trying to, to one up each other. Imagine if you put them all at eight years and they, they, like they're like, they all were up at the same eight years. I think right? that's a good idea. Also, I think, uh, Maybe it is and maybe it isn't. We would have to check and see. It is, is the balance of power switching like a guaranteed switch in the balance of power every eight years something that we can work with? No, right? but, but, but imagine this. What, if, what do you think? What, what, how good would those eight years have to be for people to vote that same party back in at the same numbers? It would have to be pretty fucking good, right? Yeah. Which is, that, I mean, it's good to have a high standard but, like that, but also how and how, what do, what do, how are we defining good? Because right now, well, I mean, I, before like, COVID, things were going pretty fucking well, and it didn't matter for Trump. It didn't matter that COVID was outside of his control. But imagine if you only got one term. You got eight years. Yeah. You got eight fucking years. So then you got somebody who's in there busting their ass. Right. They're, they're not having to worry about fundraising again. So you're saying eight years, one term, and you're out. Yep. It's interesting. I think that part would be interesting I would have, to guess work what? on. Because yeah. guess what? We all got elected in there. I have no reason to fuck with you again. I have no right. reason to talk shit about you again. I'm not getting reelected. It's going right. to do me no good. Mm. The best interest I could have for the organization is, is that the people put us in here, whether we agreed or not, whether we liked each other or not, mm. but now it's time for us to get on the same page. The next oncoming staff that's coming in, you know, you could run for a different position. Right. I mean, right? you could elevate from... Congress to the president, hundred percent, not in reverse, not in reverse, right? But 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 imagine if you did that, then it would it would take out this need for us to want to beat each other down, yeah. And instead, it's like, hey, look, it's kind of like the military, mm. like we didn't get to like look, you know, when we did selection assessment, or you know, even in boot camp, we were different, we were different, you know, platoons and all this and that. Right, we competed yeah. with each other. After we got to the fleet. This is what this is what got us there. We all made it there. Now it's time for us to fucking work together and go to war. Everybody that's there knows that everybody else is on the same page, right? And it's you can't play tug of war from you. You can't if you unbraided a uh, uh, one of those big climbing ropes used for tug of war and just had three different groups of people pulling in three different directions against somebody pulling in one direction, you're gonna fucking lose every yeah. single time. And that's what we do as a country right now. And I think I think it's better for us with wars. I think it's better with this with the economy, all of it, because our political climate doesn't change as much. I mean, the thing that's so unstable right now is, is that no matter what, every two years, you've got an election. Yeah. Yeah. And wh here, here's what that breeds. Again, it's, it's money. I think um, yes. the idea that you can set up a political pack, raise, especially a 501c6 and raise however much money you want. Spend it however you want and yep. never have to report where that money a came pack. from. Yep. That should be illegal. It, but, it should be illegal. I don't give a fuck about Mitt Romney and his corporations are people, my friend. No, they're not. They're corporations and they have a profit motive. American, when, when you or I have a profit motive, it's me putting food on my table for my family. That's my profit motive. When Amazon has a profit motive, it is draining as much money out of the, the people as possible so I can become super rich. Yes. Now, I'm not anti-Amazon. I'm not anti-rich people either. But let's if we're gonna <clears throat> if we're gonna allow people to invest in the political outcomes of our country, we better be damn sure what their intentions are, right? And I, the, the idea that that anybody can go out and just raise money from from companies think how, why is this okay? Why is it okay that lobbyists can pay people for access to the yes. government so they can get their will? Like if it only costs money, that is not. A meritocracy. It's not a republic. It's not a democracy. It's not. It's, it's a not. plutocracy at that point. It is bullshit. I don't want to live in a country where you get told things like you can be as involved in the government as you can afford to be, or you can be as healthy as you can afford yeah. to be. That is unethical. That's unethical. evil to yep. me. Uh, so, but I, I'll tell you what's not unethical. Ghost bed. Yeah, ghost beds are not unethical. Uh, and if if I was going to tell you anything to do. You know, listen, as, as a lot of people out there are listening to the government, so you should listen to me. Yeah. Um, you should go buy a ghost mm. bed. They, um, they, are, they actually already started their sales for oh, Black yeah. Friday and uh, will run through Cyber Monday. They mm. got 30% off site-wide. Ghost beds are so badass. They are supportive of military, first mm. responders, everybody who's out uh, keeping this country going, which right. is why mm. we love ghost beds. Ghost bed, uh, really awesome. We, we laugh about this all the time, but it's got a 20-year warranty. 
uh, sleep in that thing for 20 years. And if at 19 years you don't like it anymore, send it back and they'll replace it. Um, 101 nights, you can try the bed out with uh, and, and send it back for a full return. Uh, get your money back. They have 0% financing. Um, for how many months is it? Uh, 36 months. 36 pay as you go months. plan. Yeah. Pay as you go plan. <clears throat> Um, and think so, about the people they support to you. Yeah. I mean, teachers, teachers, nurses, nurses. And, and I bring that up for this specific reason, especially on this show. Uh, teachers and nurses are both somewhere in the 60% Democrat range. Yeah. Ghostbed doesn't give a fuck who you voted for. They care about this country and who yep. keeps this country going. They care about police who mostly vote conservative. And, and first responders in general who mostly vote conservative, but the medical services people and the teachers yep. are mostly, they yeah. vote liberal. 100%. They don't give two fucks about that. Neither do I, frankly. Neither do I. I don't care. You I mean, it, you, you can't. If you care about, teachers are actually 80, almost 80% uh, uh, Democrat, but that includes universities. So it, uh, I'm sure it's, it's skewed. But anyways, people who take, uh, companies like this that take care of the people that take care of us will get all of my money. Yes. And yes. people who fucking are out there like Ben and Jerry's talking about defund the police. You can suck my dick with that bullshit. Dude. Absolutely. Honestly. Um, so you can go to ghost pet bundles. The number one seller is obviously the, uh, they have the adjustable base mm -hmm. combo bundle mattress plus adjustable base. And then they have a uh, deluxe mattress, which is amazing. Got cooling technology, all that 30% off site wide, go over and check them out at ghostbeds.com forward slash drinking bros. Yeah. So we ripped on uh, conservatives or I'm sorry. We ripped on liberals a little bit. Let's rip on conservatives a little bit. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite subjects. <clears throat> because it's one of the ones that I feel like there is the least amount of knowledge on and the most amount of this stupid pull yourself up by your bootstraps nonsense. Now, look, you should absolutely be motivated and hardworking and intent on making the best life for your family and making this country as good as you can possibly make it. I mean, what happened to the Democrats that said, stop asking what your country can do for you and ask what you can do for your country? That's I've. You know, J I guess JFK got his fucking brains blown out, but you see more disparity intra party. That's what happens on how to handle student loan debt, I think, than any other issue that exists. And nobody knows how to handle it. Let me let's be clear about this. Even public universities have become a real problem for a number of reasons in the United States. It's not just about the fact that they're a hotbed of anti capitalism and, and Marxist bullshit, because that's obviously true. You see it more and more these days. You see conservatives getting banned from universities because uh, uh, some some dumb dumb writes a letter to the dean and says, "You can't let Ben Shapiro here." Like, why not? You can't listen to a guy talk. You're so weak minded that you can't listen to a guy talk without losing your fucking mind. Are you kidding me? That's on you, brother. That's not on me. Uh, but look no further than conservative speakers being banned from campuses for evidence of that bullshit. Now, the cost. Here's my real problem. Forget about all that. That's, that's a culture problem. I'm talking about the issue of young people in our society right now that are experiencing a level of debt right out of the gate that is crippling our economy. It's not about how you feel personally about this issue. It is about how it is affecting all of America, in my opinion. Yeah, but I mean, like, look, it's not our, your, your, your debt's not, if you want to go to college, it's not my fucking problem. Sure, but you're, you're saying this in the same way that people would say, uh, I mean, yeah, you got a back injury and you got addicted to pills. That's your problem, it's not different. mine. It's no, absolutely not different because you're set up in a society that no, demands bro. you have a college degree. It doesn't demand I, it. It doesn't. It doesn't. You're right. But the, the average 18-year-old that signs up for some, you can't fucking buy a handgun, but you can sign up for $120,000 in debt. It's fucking stupid. But anyways, you are putting people in a situation where they are taught their entire lives, I cannot be successful in this country unless I get a college degree. Now, it's changing now. People are messaging more outside of that. Luckily, trades and things like that are just independent media, learning on your own, whatever it is. But you take an 18-year-old and you tell them for their entire lives, you have to do this to get this result, and this, is, this result means success. And then they go out and do it, and then we allow these organizations, it's the same way we did with healthcare. You can't blame 83% of all bankruptcies coming from healthcare costs, unpaid healthcare costs on the individual. People oh. need healthcare, people need education. It, and we allowed these predatory motherfuckers to raise the rates and, and we've never done shit about it. So on the left, they're trying to defend the, the academic, academic institution 
And on I the right, they're trying who, to demonize the person. It doesn't make any know, sense. Well, I mean, look, I, I think it's your responsibility. I mean, I think it's, it's you're 18 years old. If we say this is what it is, you're an adult. If we allow you to sign for this, I, th I think it's on your shoulders. Like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's has anything to do with my responsibility. I didn't go to college. I didn't go to college and, and I, I look and I, I would, I would love to go back to 90% of the people I went to school with yeah. and see what, you know, they graduated and whatever I've college they I've got four they degrees. With. I've never used yeah. any of them so, for any kind so of So my work. thing Let's of it is, is this that. is like, is, is no, like this is called responsibility. It you is. Signed, sure. You signed the line. So then, okay, let's say, let's say 18, we're going to give them a, a, a just like, we're going to give them a, 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 a mulligan at 18 for right. sign on to this. Well, did we do it? What, what age does that stop at? Nobody gave a fuck that I signed 17 years old and went right. to war. It's true, but it's different. You're not incurring a bunch of debt. I mean, you know I, I, mean? I mean, I don't know. You come back and, and you, you know, you got guys who lost their fucking legs. You got guys who true, lost yeah. their minds yep. and nobody gives a fuck about them. Well, that's, we're not, you're, we're, right, not so, we're not playing in either organ. These are both issues. But I'm just, but I'm just saying like, and look, it's not about, it's not about the personal responsibility of the individual here because they've been placed in a predatory situation. And even if it was, let's say you're completely right. And I, and I'm completely wrong. Even then we still have a mess that has to get cleaned up. Well, we, it absolutely has to be fixed. There's no, there, we, we look, we grew into society since the 19th, actually since the GI bill, since the 1950s I, that requires a college degree, even when it doesn't make sense. Like how I, many job applications have you seen or applied for so, or so, any of these no, people no. that just said any college degree? So I'm going to, so I'm right? going to, so here's what I'm going to tell you is I'm going to tell you, I, I don't think, so I don't think the problem is the, the student loan debt. I don't think the problem is the people who are going to college. Hmm. I think the problem is the universities not oh, teaching yeah, quality education. Well, that's part of it too. I, don't, I think it's, yeah. I think if 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 you're telling me that you're doing jobs <laughs> that you don't use your degree at, and I, I hear everybody say this that well, I don't use any of my college. Right. Well, then that tells me that you're that the, that the fucking the four years or eight years that you spend going to fucking college and learning, right. I use shit <clears throat> that I learned in the military every fucking oh, yeah. day. Oh yeah, yeah. It's and so it's, it tells me that that's that, why groups like uh, Jocko's and Mike Sorelli's are so important. What, to, but, to teach people in corporate America that that's not necessary, but even people in court of, corporate America, the people who have all the money and have all the jobs, don't believe what you believe. Well, they don't believe it. Uh, listen, and they have all the stuff. Well, like you have to can you have to do two things. You have to convince them that they're wrong because they're wrong. I'm, uh, Having a college degree, even having year, five plus years of experience in a field is not a predictor of success. This no, is, it's not. There's, there's plenty of data on no, the subject. It's not. Stanford's done good research on this, which is funny because they're a university. Uh, uh, what's, the, what's the conservative one? God, I can't remember the name of it. But that, this other research group, even the Congressional uh, Review Service has done But I think businesses, so I, I think businesses, what they're going to do is, is you're going to start seeing here in the next, mm -hmm. um, the next, you know, 10, 15 years, they're going to get away from that needing a college degree. Yeah, yeah, in I, ten I, years, right? I, I think, I think, For I think, sure, I think yeah. they're going to. I think you're going to put colleges. Absolutely, I think you're going to yeah. put these universities. This fucking this this gold mine. I mean, here's what's fucked is is that these universities can charge you so much fucking money. We'll get to that. For this. And then on, you talk about highway robbery, mm -hmm. like, and then you're, t so you're telling me that all these motherfuckers in higher education can profit off this, but I have to pay, foot the bill for it. Right. Fuck you. Well, no, I mean, look, ultimately that's what, when we're talking about student loan debt forgiveness, that's not coming out of your pocket or mine. Where's that going to come from? Coming from fucking banks that did predatory lending. So, wh but where's that money come from then? From the banks. So then they're going to be hurting at some point. We're going to have to fucking bail them out. It's going to be the slinky effect. It, it will it's be, be to some degree, but that's, you're, you're talking about personal responsibility and you're applying yeah. it to these individual 18 year old children, but you're not applying it to 60 year old bank executives. You know yeah, what I mean? So I don't, I don't think you forgive the loan. The, the, so, okay. We could forgive at this date. Right. After we fix the problem going forward. We need to do both. But Probably I don't think simultaneously. Here's the problem. Co the, so the, you, the cost of, of college in this country right now, according to Forbes, is rising eight times faster than wages are rising. So how does, but how eight does that make sense? Eight times faster. How, well, is it getting, is, is, is it getting, is, is education that nobody's using? It's is not that, any is, better. Is, is, it, is it cost? Yeah. Is, it's, is our education the education, getting better? The education is not as good and it is less applicable, So how did, so, 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 uh, less show me, so, so what you're telling me is, so, so. The same thing that happened with so, Trump University and all these other for-profit colleges that took insane. people's money and didn't teach people shit. It's insane. They all had to give that money back. Well, and I think all yes, these fucking universities all need to do the same goddamn thing. The all banks and universities. Look, here's what happened. Eight times faster, university costs is, is rising than wages. 
we're creating an education bubble, which is ultimately a lending bubble. Now, how did that work out with the housing market, dude? It, yeah. it fucking crippled our economy. The average 24-year-old in this country that's a college graduate has $30,000 in debt, which means they can't go out and buy that starter home at 25 to 28 years old that they normally would, mm -hmm. which means the housing, you're talking about a slinky effect. The housing market's fucked. Yeah. They don't have expendable income, oh, which means you. the entire economy's fucked. I got you. So education is so not getting better. I'm, Professors are not actually getting paid that much more. They're getting paid about 20% more per inflation than they were 2000% more for well, administrators and college. Well, I mean, look, I mean, it's the same but, bullshit. But, but I mean, it's the same I mean, if education is not getting better, education is getting taught by professors. So professors aren't getting any better. So I don't think they should be paid more. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like this is, this is the problem with it is I, no, we're not, we should not forgive any fucking loan for forgiveness until we can ensure that going forward. Cause okay. Because here, here's what's going to happen. It's just like with veterans. Let me, mm. let, me, let me give you a perfect example. And veterans get out of the military. You can, you can draw your GI Bill, go to school for four years, right. get paid COLA and all this shit, right? Mm. And you can draw unemployment because yep. technically you're unemployed, which is a complete bullshit is a complete it's a, it's a bit of a scam yeah it's, for sure it's a fucking You're double dipping. it is a well, fucking triple scam some it is a yeah. that is a piece of shit who does that so well so, i mean you know when you're when you're when you don't know what the fuck is going on i, I would equate a 24 maybe an experience it's not true but a 24 year old or a 28 year old even getting out of the army right now to me like knowing how to live their life and balance checkbooks and invest in the stock market and start a business. They're the same as that 18 year old to me. Bro, I got a no fucking, idea what the fuck I got a doing. fucking Marine Corps at 21 years old. Yeah. I was out of the Marine Corps after four years at and you 21 didn't know what the old. fuck you were doing for no a long clue, time. No clue. But you know what I did? I busted my ass and I worked. I slept right. on fucking couches. Yeah. I poured concrete. I tied fucking steel. And that's I was good. tying steel and pouring concrete. It's when good. Barack Obama called me. It's good that you did that. But but, that's, but we should not expect that out of people. Why? We don't, because we want people to be as successful as quickly as possible in this country. Uh, but I mean, and we it, it is the job of education. But I don't to think, set people up for success at the earliest possible moment in their life because it makes life for everybody better. Yeah, but you know what? Education case. is learning what I don't want to fucking do. Yeah, I don't want to no be shit, tying right? steel my whole life. I yeah. think. I, do you, so you think we should pay for motherfuckers to figure it out? No, absolutely. No, not. you can't do that. So you have to figure out better ways to determine who's good at what, but not. Not force, not well, pigeonhole people so, and stuff. You but, know what? You, you know, know where that starts. You, you know. You know how you. You know how you. You. You speed up this education process. Well, it starts by is not going to is, fucking is, twelve years of high school. Is, is people, That's our twelve people, years of school. Is people start working at a younger age. For sure. Yeah. People having responsibilities yeah, yeah. and knowing that they don't like swinging hammers and they yeah. have chores instead of. <clears throat> you don't figure it out sitting behind an Xbox playing fucking video games. No, we've 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 done ourselves a great disservice in education in general i mean it's our education system reflects america in general like there's a lot of fucked up shit in america that you can Man. see inside that like the, the the predatory lending practices the uh the the rise of of uh academia becoming some like pro-marxist thing i don't know what the fuck that happened or why but yeah we we see a lot of stuff so i would ask this for a for a major d1 college football team the average revenue per year is about 32 million dollars right for an average D1 team. For basketball, it's about 8.1 million. The players see none of this money, right? Mm -hmm. Zero. They don't get paid shit. They don't have unions. They can't profit off their own likeness until recently. I mean, I until know. this so, past so this, year. The same, the same. Well, hold on. And there's 30 teams in Division One schools that make over $100 million a year on their athletics so, programs. So I do think there's an incentive to pay them. But here's what I'm going to tell you on the backside of this. When you say they don't get anything, mm -hmm. they... They, they, they don't have any debt. They at least don't have the student loan debt, but you're saying like, hey, at least you didn't die. That's not what we should have. That's a better. Saying. We should have a better expectation in America than just not getting saddled with debt for a well, useless degree. Well, I, like I, we've allowed people in the same way that these opiate producing companies are getting bashed one week after another. We've seen three in the last month that have been sued by the federal government, had to give up billions of dollars, been fined, had their businesses shut down and all this other stuff for predatory bullshit. Same thing happened with tobacco companies. Never happened with the housing industry or the car industry. So by I think the way, I but. think what, I think what would be a better a better way. By the way, I'll, let me let me finish this. Yeah. So on the college football thing, the or the college athletics thing, I understand it's a business. It is a big business, and that business funds a lot of stuff at the university. It funds uh, uh, all the other varsity sports that don't actually make money, which is cool, I guess, because they get scholarships now because of this program. That's great. Why isn't it funny the education? This seems like indentured servitude now, now, and nobody's benefiting from it except for the university. Nobody's benefiting. There's, there's twice as many administrators on campuses 
today than there was 15 years ago. So, so, so that's my right? point back. It's just bloat, bloat, bloat. And, and they've made, uh, even, even, uh, uh, let's see. One of the top players in college football, Trevor Lawrence, even he has only made his tuition, uh, uh, three times over, right? After finally being able to profit from his likeness, it's still not that much money. And we know these systems are predatory, but we also see a huge potential for earnings. So I don't want to throw the system away. So I, think, so I don't want to throw academia out. I don't want to well, throw college out. So, we so, need to fix this shit. So I, so I think you got one or two ways. Either you pay, if, if it's going to be separate and it's not going to go to education, then you mm-hmm. have to pay the athletes. Yeah. If not, then I think it goes to the school. It goes to education. It goes to lowering. But only education. Only education. Yeah. And it goes to lowering down the price that people yeah. have to pay. And I, you know what? And I would see nothing wrong with that. No, and it's uh, the bottom line of all this is we're allowing our people to be taken advantage of yes. by vulture capitalism. We allowed it with the housing market, with the subprime lending. We allowed it with the car industry by not having uh, uh, good safety requirements. We allowed it with fucking tobacco. We allowed it with the opioid crisis. We've allowed it many, many times, and nobody seems to ever go to jail for fucking the American people over, ever. I'm growing tired of this pull yourself up by your bootstraps thing. I gotta, I've got to be honest. It's... you. I don't get when I when I hear about somebody years later telling me a story like, yeah, dude, I got out of the army and I just started taking pills. And I'm like, you know what? I fucking feel that shit. I understand. I'm in pain every single goddamn day, not just physical pain either. And it's it's it becomes very easy when the solution from the doctor who's supposed to be a person you trust is just a handful of fucking pills. Yeah, I mean, you know I look, I mean, and in the same way, the but, solution for education and having a good life in America is to hand this kid fucking 30 grand in student, student loan debt. We are fucking people over by doing that. Yeah, These I mean, kids are not intellectually sophisticated enough to put up a defense against that kind of shit. They feel like that's their only option to do that. Well, I mean, look, look, I, it, that, that's on the parents who've done it before and who know what it's it like. Sure is, yeah. It's on the parents to tell them and educate them. But what's the, but what's, what's, well, I mean, what's, the difference? what's the parent going to do when they're working a full-time job still? And I mean, okay. So not, yeah, that, not that that absolves you from being a parent. I mean, but, but I mean, it doesn't absolve you. I mean, I, I work fucking full-time job and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a parent to my kids and I'm going to tell them how hard it is to pay back debt. I'm like, I'm going to educate them on these things. But when you right. talk about <clears> the generation before us and our parents are overloaded with debt and who have filed bankruptcy a yeah. thousand times and you've, you've allowed this bankruptcy thing to where people can file it i mean how many how many how many how many forgivenesses do you get in this country well i don't how I, much do we I'm, owe I'm a lot more to, keen on forgiving individuals point? who've been taken advantage of than i am on forgiving the banking industry Dude, the banking industry stuck its own fist in its ass Dude. right and then it reached over to america and stuck its fist up america's 100%. ass and all we did was sew both assholes i mean up and then give the banks money but when you talk about taking advantage of i mean we can go down the fucking list mm. We can go down the fucking list, man. There's a lot of it. And that's the, the entire, this is why this I'm is why so we gotta personally. Educate ourselves. Yeah, this is why we is. have to, we have to know what yeah. we're doing. This is why I'm so personally anti-government. It's not because I'm an anarchist. It's because the only job of the government is to pr- protect people, provide national defense, make sure that people aren't being taken advantage of by anything. Any institution more powerful than the individual should be regulated somehow, right? To make sure it can't take advantage. And maybe it's just regulated by you and me. Maybe but it's I mean, regulated by how we we collectively choose why, to spend why, our money. It doesn't why? necessarily have to be the federal government, but their only job is to protect us from that. And they've enabled it. Man, I had the same. And they profited from it. I had the same opportunity to go take on fucking student loan debt. Hmm? I didn't fucking do it. You know why? Because I knew I had to pay it back. When people don't understand individual responsibility of having to do it on hmm. your fucking own, that's when you get taken advantage of. It sure is. Like, yeah, but at 18 advantage. years old, man, I mean, people don't, it's 17 in some cases, maybe later. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really matter when you enter college. Well, then how about this? Then you at 18, feel, you shouldn't be able to vote or own a gun. If you can't make a decision on if you could take on $130,000 in debt, you think you can trust them on fucking owning a weapon or, 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 or buying alcohol or making their own adult decisions? I mean, so let me ask you this. 18, but, I mean, like, yeah, you have, you've got a duty in, a, in the military to disobey an unlawful order. How many times has that happened where an 18 year old private has looked at their 21 or 25 year old sergeant and said, you know what? That's not right. We're not doing that. It very rarely happens. Yeah, I did it. I know, but it very, 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 very rarely happens because you you feel the weight of the entire system Um, on top of your shoulders when you do that. And oftentimes if you make a, if you make a statement like that, yet it's noble and brave and it's, 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 it's admirable, but it is, it will ruin your fucking career. Yeah, but you know what? But here's the thing. It's habitual, right? I mean, I, I I was standing up against my dad talk like this is where I was raised. Mm. 
My dad taught me to not worry about, don't live in the court of public opinion. The right. reason that all this shit's happening is because fucking people are weak. Uh, yeah, for sure. Well, people, people are, are weak. weak and lazy and they don't want to think for themselves. I mean, Man, I, I, but I I, I, the, the problem for me isn't, I don't, I don't want to argue over personal responsibility. I just want to look at the result. Here's the result. We are saddling the average 22 to 24 year old with $30,000 of student loan debt, which they spend the first 15 years just paying the interest on yeah. typically. Now, that person normally would be spending those first couple of years saving ten to twenty thousand dollars to put a down payment on a home, right? Which makes sure that housing prices stay low because the more down payments that happen, the more insured and and good loans that are made in the housing market, the stronger the entire yeah. housing market is. Now, these people who would who would who would uh, they're now living paycheck to paycheck. They're not buying mortgages which weakens the housing market. They're not buying cars, which we, weakens the car market. And it makes our housing market more uh, susceptible to foreign actors now. Chinese investors are going into every major housing market in the United States and offering cash 20% over asking price. They're walking up to people's doors, even in Ross's neighborhood, knocking on the door and saying, hey, we want to buy your house cash. Here's $1.2 million, hey, so, double what the house so, is so, worth. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go even, I'm going to go one step further on yeah. this. You ready? Mm -hmm. Tell me. Like, I love teachers. Tell me how I, we pay the same rate for our kids to go to school with our tax money, but now we have to be home raising our kids while trying to work to pay that same tax rate right. when the kids aren't even in the same facility. I yeah. think that in 10 years... Like, the stuff that's going on with COVID right now where kids are going to Harvard, Princeton, et cetera, and they're sitting in their house in their underwear on a what, computer, what, and they're still, paying, they're still paying $45,000. What about our public schools? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, charging our... the same amount to, to do remote work like, 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 like that? Come like, on, like, man. Like, 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 like no. This... But you can see that's just another symptom of it being an entirely predatory thing. Again, this is not about absolving people of their debt. That's not the point <laughs> I want to make. It's, I, I don't, I don't want to hear this about, like, you shouldn't have done it if you didn't want to pay for it, because I don't think people... I, I, I think you're you're missing the point when you say that. Maybe you're right about that, but I think it's missing the point. So should we bail we, everybody out who had a well, kid at 17 years old? Let's get there. And, well, we do, though, and, 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 with social welfare programs, because uh, here's what we learned. Oh, no, I'm saying here's for, what we for learned. dads who own child support, so should we bail them out? The, 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 the young men who, who, who got some girl pregnant at 18 mm -hmm. years old, who, I mean, obviously he didn't understand what that Correct. fucking commitment yeah. was. Do, I mean, that's what I'm saying is at what point yes. do you, we do? Yes, and here's why. It's not, it's not to... It's not to forgive the act. It's to make sure that our country stays strong. Here's what we know statistically. Single parents of kids, particularly in poor neighborhoods, produce children that don't get good educations and usually end up in some kind of criminal behavior. Poverty breeds crime. It just is what it is. It doesn't matter what your race, ethnicity, religion, any of that shit. Poverty is the number one indicator of crime, right? We know that. That is a problem that has to be fixed. Now, you can't make people work hard. Yeah. But you also can't let them become a, a drag in society and expect it to go well. Dude, I, Here's a, we talk a lot about numbers on this show. Here's a number for you. U.S. citizens are currently on the hook for $1.6 trillion in student loans. 1.6 trillion. 8% of our GDP is owed to universities and banks in this country just for student loans. That is fucked. And it's untenable. We cannot allow this to continue. I don't know what the solution is. But not, I think the people that if... The, whenever I'm looking for a solution to a problem like this, I ask myself... Who caused this problem? A lot of people did. Our complacency caused it. Our parents not telling us the right shit. Industry in America not figuring out that college degrees, by and large, are fucking pointless, at least in the way we do it now. Four-year degree and fucking like math to do something like get fucked, dude. You didn't need all that shit. You didn't need to learn all these extra things. That shit, you should have been done with your education by 19 and in the workforce, right? That's what they do in Germany. You graduate high school at 16, you go to three years of university, then you're in the workforce in Germany. They have a pretty good goddamn economy. Yeah. And they have for a long, they've been fucking uh, propping up the EU for years now, particularly Greece, Spain, Italy. So this isn't about the personal responsibility aspect of it. I do agree with you. I did the same thing you did. I didn't pay a dime for any college I ever went to. It was all uh, hard work, the military, all this other stuff that I did. I didn't pay for any of it, but I do understand when people, it's like in America right now, all these institutions that you think you can trust are telling you these things.
And we found out too late after we already owed them money that they were lying to us. Same thing with the housing market and it collapsed. I mean, fuck, if I do, we you allow, know I, do, I do it all the time. I hire, you know what? That's this, this is the epitome of life. I hire camera guys all the time who fucking tell me they're going to do shit and they don't fucking do it. Yeah. I fucking hire employees all the time who tell me they're going to do stuff. I date people. It is, Same. this is life. People are unreliable. This is life. It is. But and guess what? We have to take care Learn of each it. other. Like if we Learn it. Here's what I see right now. There's no point in assigning blame unless you're going to do something about it that, 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 that helps. So if, 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 if I'm just going to say you guys should have done the right thing, get fucked, that doesn't make I our think economy we provide better. an ulterior option. We, we provide well, another we, option. Moving forward, we have to. So, yeah. But we still have to deal with the mess we've made, right? Oh. I, this is one of my favorite debates because so I don't what know do you, what, what do the answer is. What do you do for is. the people who paid their debts? So then that's the problem is, right? You take the, the, the person, the same 18-year-old right. who busted their ass and who was, who was you know, a single mother. You know, here, here's, here's why. Here's my big problem with Maybe you give them a tax credit for doing this, the right thing. The single, you got the single mother who, who busted her ass to get through nursing school to be able to pay for a child. She didn't right. ask anybody for fucking help. She didn't ask anybody for fucking child care. She figured it out. And, and then you're going to sit here and she paid it off and you're going to take some cheese dick kid mm -hmm. who was just some snotty nosed brat who never had to fucking do nothing and who sit, sit around college, got through it and then just is just lazy as fuck and doesn't want to work and you're going to pay off their student loan and this woman just was able to do it? Fuck that. Right. I mean, I agree with it, but you're, you're talking about two different issues. Right. I mean, we, we have to take care of both of those people. We, we don't get to decide who to take care of in this country. Yeah, we but, take care of everybody. And I don't want to hear this shit about there's no money. We want 8% of our goddamn uh, uh, GDP is tied up in student loan debt. Right I would now, do it if today. the universities, I would be okay with it if the universities would split it. Split the costs. Yeah. For yeah, sure. The universities have to have yeah. something mm. on their back. Here's these. what I don't I don't like the government getting involved in regulating private industry, but when private industry becomes completely predatory like the housing market did and like education has and like the big pharmaceutical industry has you have to do something at some point you have to because it becomes an institution too large for the individual to fight back against so how do we handle it i don't know the answer to this you and i are just having a conversation yeah. about it i would love this is one of my favorite yeah. subjects because it's so fucked up so fucked and it's up. so pervasive there's so many people that are fucked by this right now i want to know what the audience thinks about this so before we uh this will be out uh the day after Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening. And please go, as soon as you hear this, please go uh, to iTunes and, and rate and review. Cause yeah, it and helps. I want And I want to say like, look, if, if you're one of these, if you're going to be a person who's going to get pissed off at me for saying what I'm saying, right. you're probably the person I'm fucking talking to. Probably. Yeah. Um, you know, look, I, I think that, I think we should give anybody a hand up and I'm all about anybody who's busting their ass and just needs mm -hmm. a little bit of a fucking help because God knows I've had plenty of help in my life. Right. right. For sure. Um, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is like if you're one of these people who's just a lazy fuck, we've got plenty of those already on the yeah, in America. Well, it's it's hard to determine who is and who isn't, to be honest, at an individual level. But I agree with that for sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't think uh, here's the here's for for those of you that feel like Dakota out there uh, that feel the way he does. I would ask you this: if you saw somebody getting jumped in an alley, what would you do? Obviously, you would probably step in and do something about it because we are. And I assume most of our audience are protectors. That's how we feel. Depends on what part I came in. For sure. Exactly. Yeah. If, if somebody started shit and they got their ass kicked, like, fuck them. Yeah. Right. I mean, but, I, but I wouldn't if, let them get beat to a it, pulp. No. And if some, but if somebody gets taken advantage of by a business or by an institution or by the government, we sit here with our hands in our pockets all the time. We do it every single day. We did it during the housing market. Everybody was looking around like, why is this person and no offense, but why is this person that makes 30 grand a year and a $200,000 house with a, with a prime rated mortgage that is not how this is supposed to work everybody knew something was fucked up they were looking around like hey our friends that are fucking uh not wealthy or they're they're in a like this doesn't make sense what i'm seeing we all knew that something was happening with the pharmaceutical industry everybody knows these stats everybody knows that it costs 27 dollars for a fucking aspirin yep. in a hospital we don't do shit about it we keep electing these stupid fucking politicians that take money from that industry so what do we how much i wonder how much education lobbies are paying uh, uh well, politicians know. in this country it's well, got to be a lot right because otherwise this would never be allowed to happen anyways we're going to wrap it up here please go onto the youtube page onto our instagram uh email us whatever you want to do and let us know what you think about this issue what you think about 
uh, constitutional originalists versus uh, living document stuff. We really want to hear what you guys think so we can respond to it. And so we can both, maybe you know something we don't, maybe we can learn something. Absolutely. These, these issues are fucked up and we have to do something about so it. So fucked up. All right. Thank you guys. Yeah.